A Child's Garden of Verses, Selected Poems by Robert Louis Stevenson. The Swing. How do you like to go up in a swing, up in the air so blue? Oh, I do think it the pleasantest thing that ever a child can do. Up in the air and over the wall, till I can see so wide, rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside, till I look down on the garden green, down on the roof so brown, up in the air I go flying again, up in the air and down. Sometimes people ask me how long did it take me to write the programs that we use in the math lab, and when I have this work, you know, I, I started teaching in 1965, and when they decided to start the math lab, and I started to write programs to help kids learn the math, I said, what don't they understand? And that's where I started. And if I hadn't had those years and years of teaching the basic levels, I wouldn't know the answer to those questions. So they said, how long did it take you to write this program? Well, it probably took me 30 years, plus the rest of my life. I went to a college that's smack dab in the middle of Amish land in western Pennsylvania, Liberal Arts College, Westminster College. I enjoyed it very much. When I started college, the girls had curfew at 7 o'clock. You could not go to class wearing anything but a dress. To go to chapel, you had to wear a hat and gloves. That's how long ago I went to college. <laughs> But I graduated from there in 1965, and I started teaching school in the same town in which I graduated, in New Wilmington High School, which was in the, a rural area, and I taught 100% of the freshman Algebra one. When I took my programming class, you're asking for the commands of the computer to do something and then do it over again. You're doing that kind of iterative process. And I remember sitting in that first computer class in, I think, 1967, and the whole class was completely lost. And then all of a sudden it hit me like that um, knitting and this other stuff, whatever it was, was a one-to-one -one correspondence that there was something connected there. And I turned to the man who was sitting next to me taking the same class and I said, it's just like knitting. And he didn't quite get it. <laughs> it was, I, but, you know, he was he still had the blanks there. I don't know what you're talking about, lady, but from that time I knew how to program. I started knitting when I was a senior in college, and I had needles that I bought at the store, and when you, when you start need, knitting, and somebody gives up knitting, they give you their old needles. And um, so I had a, quite a collection of these regular metal needles, and one time I was knitting at my aunt's house and she told me that my grandmother had some needles that sh she had had when she was alive and that nobody else was interested in them. So she ran away up the stairs to some secret place and came back with these needles which are one of my most precious possessions that they are made out of bone and they are what my grandmother used. And I found that knitting was the secret to my learning how to program which is a strange thing. So since you have to repeat and then a repeat within a repeat, when you're doing this, you start working on it. It takes about two repeats before the pattern gets in your head, and then you don't have to look at it anymore. I mean, you don't have to read the words anymore. So it's very slow at first, and then you find yourself, I'm going to knit until I come to the next repeat. So it pushes you sort of on. and Sort of like programming, really is. It is exactly like programming. Sometimes they, the profession that I'm in, they're trying to get more and more girls interested in computer science. And I have seen initiatives where they decided if they made the computer pink, that it would appeal more to girls. And I think, how dumb is that? They should be teaching girls to knit. I was the only girl in the class. <laughs> yeah, I, I was taking a class, and I was working on a master's degree in mathematics for uh, at Cleveland State University in Ohio, and they had a mainframe computer and where we programmed with the punched cards and stuff. When you just you just wrote your code out on paper and somebody else put it in the computer. And then you prayed that it would work. So you had to wait like two or three days before whatever you tried was actually tested. This makes you into a very careful programmer. When I took programming I liked it. I taught in Manchester by the sea 
in Massachusetts. And the year I arrived, the school was experimenting with time sharing, and to rent one twelfth of one computer was a thousand dollars a month. So the school had this computer investment. And so the company came out to teach us how to use it. And I had had a programming class. And uh, when he, he was explaining something, asked them if a for loop in what he was doing here was like a do loop in Fortran. And he said, yes, very much like it. And the department chairman said, you're in charge of that machine to me. He turned around and said, you're in charge of that. And the next year he assigned me seven students to teach how to use it. And since the computer cost more than my yearly salary, I thought I was really blessed to be allowed to use it. So at, the students always stayed till I chased them out at five o'clock. I said, you must go home now. And then from five o'clock to six o'clock, I used the thousand dollar a month machine. And I thought myself, luckiest person in the world to have that under my power, never dreaming that I would ever own one, much less now probably have six computers in my house. Got small and plastic, they still called them floppy drives, but the originals were floppy, and it went in here, but I, this drive was not working when I came, so I've never seen it used, but uh, that's where you put them in to so close the door. And I'll show you the, uh, cassette that worked. I only had one of these. I actually did use this. You could write a program on this and save it to the cassette drive. And it looked like a cassette, but it has a notch out of it so that it fits. There's actually a program in there that I wrote. It fits in here so that and you could read from the tape drive. So it's changed quite a bit. I wrote a book. I did. Uh, I have, I have two master's degrees, one in mathematics and one in theology, the most important subject in the whole world. And so I'm very interested in all cultures and all philosophical thoughts. I, you know, I like to listen to people discuss anything of the nature of the meaning of life or something like that. And um, I had a seminary professor. He was really a nerd and had a lot of things that I thought were really good. So I tried to take his main tenets and make it into a historical novel so that it would be more palatable. I just put it in a Kindle book on Amazon, Hatshepsut, the Pharaoh's Daughter. It's a um, historical novel try trying to tie the biblical history with the Egyptian history. But I had that experience, which is lots of fun wouldn't mind doing it again. <laughs> it took five years to do that one, <laughs> and it's very short. I got tricked into being a baker. After I was married, I made a birthday cake for my husband, I think, and I put those little scallopy things around and invited our next door neighbors over. And I had a wonderful next door neighbor. This one I lived in Canada. Dan, if you don't learn your geography, you have to move there. Anyway, we lived in Canada. This really neat lady had want, wanted to have a special reception for a couple that was celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And she decided that they needed a wedding cake look. And she said, I have the tear separators from my daughter's wedding. You, I'm going to bake the cake. You are going to decorate it. I said, okay, but with tear, fear and trepidation, I read how you are supposed to construct this. Geometry does have a lot of use. You have to manage that center of gravity, and you have to put those dowel rods in just right to keep it going. This thing that went three tiers up with the 50 on the top. So, and you can't say no to somebody who's trying to be nice to a couple that's having their 50th. So I, I did did that cake. Well, once you've done one of those, you're off to the races. So anytime I've met anybody that can't really afford a wedding cake, I usually volunteer at And I have done probably 15 wedding cakes in my time and innumerable birthday cakes because it's just fun. I wouldn't want to do it for money though. I wouldn't want to have to do it and make somebody happy, you know, because if you do it for free, then they like it. I love art. And when I was 
during my what I call my retirement. That's why I'm so old and not retired. It's because I already had my retirement. It's called motherhood. And when I was at home with my daughter, I took uh, china painting, porcelain art, and because I met a woman who painted on porcelain plates with overglazed paints, and I thought that looks really interesting. So for the 10 years that I was off, just being at home, being a mother and wife, I had a hobby of porcelain art. I'd always liked art and always worked in acrylics. I have a kiln at home and I plan to do some more of that. I love our art department, it's so good. And about a while, a long time ago, before, when we had other art teachers here, I was trying to encourage them to have the art students have electronic portfolios. So I had my daughter and I worked together trying to make some sort of template so that we could um, help students put, the, put their portfolios up. And so I made a mock portfolio for myself, if I can get it all up. This is the portfolio of my, of my china painting. And my hair was long there because I was growing hair for lots of fun. But see, these are the things that I've done in the past. The most complicated project that I did was this vase. China painted that vase. And it has dogwoods on that side. And on the other side, it has Sir Galahad searching for the Holy Grail. I think the work that I've done in the math lab here is, is sort of like everything that I ever did all came together to try to teach you kids math. It seems like that was what I was made to do.